I don't know what it is about automatic knives that are just addicting, that we, we as humans gravitate to. It must be our love for machinery, mechanics, uh, that makes us do that, and just their pure addictive nature. Welcome back, everybody, to another Blade Review, where we're looking today at the Buck Knives Mini Deploy and full size deploy automatic blades. The mini is the California legal sub two inch blade. And then the full size is about three and a quarter overall that we're gonna be diving into today. And it's been a while since I've done an automatic knife in general and an auto, honestly, from Buck. I think the last one I did was the classic Ranger automatic. This is a super fun blade, super, super fun. I'd love to see their new uh, Sport Hunter. Uh, with pocket clip and micarta and aluminum i'd love to see that in an auto at some point it would be pretty dope but today we are going to be looking at these two and running in some competitive options seeing what is available what these tools can do what makes sense maybe what doesn't as we dive into these new for 2022 autos from buck let's jump right in with the blades now the blades are going to be both made out of 154 cm steel american made steel with the boss heat treat if you know anything about Buck, you know, their heat trees, they seem to be able to get some of the best capabilities out of whatever steel they get their hands on. Now, fun little history for you on 154CM. Uh, it was originally produced in 1959 as a hardened ball bearing steel, I believe for the aircraft industry, and wasn't used in knife manufacturing until 1972 when some knife designers started using it in their custom blades. And now it's basically kind of like a mid-grade steel. It really uh, works well. It's a stainless steel. Um, they do a really good heat treat. I believe it's 59 to 61, if I remember correctly, uh, is what they you know do their heat treat and then cryo. So it's a good rust resistant steel. And then on top of that, we got this good blacked out, you know, super cool coating there. Great relief edge on the full size as well as on that mini. And I really like that shape. That is an excellent shape on that blade. Good slight drop, good belly about 3.125 on the cutting edge, eighth of an inch thick. So this is a slicey blade. A lot of um, autos tend to be more focused on tactical use. Uh, not that this couldn't be used in those roles, but I think this is a nice slicey design uh, for more EDC. Like I, I love using it for EDC. It's got this really cool like swedged in portion. The tip is nice and precise, uh, not overly thin, but definitely more on the thin, precise, you know, aspect to it and it was, it was very very slicey and i was really happy with that performance the mini with its 1.875 inch cutting edge huge belly i mean it's basically just belly it's it's a, a leaf shaped design which i really like it's got that nice little swedge eighth of an inch thick as well that holds that almost all the way to the tip so it's a, a tougher um not in the sense that the other one is not but just like a beefier little feel to it because of how short the blade is and what i found was though it did cut stuff fine uh, the full size is going to slice, particularly cardboard or food prep, things like that, just easier. Um, this one is basically for little quick cuts. You know, you could pierce a, a package that arrived at the door, obviously in a last ditch self-defense role, something like that if necessary, you know, some cordage, things like that. But if you're looking for something that's just like slice, slice, slice all day, the full size is definitely going to outperform the mini in that capability. You may be asking yourself, well, what's even the point of a mini? Well, one, if you just love the action of an auto, but there are legal reasons in your state or country that just doesn't allow for something bigger than two inches, there is just that fun factor, fun capability of running the blade, but also just maybe to help uh, with a younger person that is learning tools. You want to give them something fun to learn with and become more astute with edge tools. Uh, this is a great option to get them started with that uh, or, you know, just um, someone with smaller hands. My wife loves this kind of size just for general utility, small things that she would do around the house or property. So how about that auto action, right? I mean, that's the whole point of getting a knife like this is you want to know how that auto action is. Well, on the full size, you're going to get this nice highlighted red button as well as red safety. Now, what I really like about this is that the button when closed is just a hair above the handle scale body as well as the safety. It's just a hair above, so you can still engage it, but it's really the safety is recessed in there. You can move it back and forth. You know, red is dead. Uh, if you close it, then it will not deploy the tool. So that's nice. One little 
um, aesthetic thing that I noticed is that nowhere else on the blade do we have a satin, metal, or aluminum look. I would have liked to have that when it's on safe mode blacked out. That would have been nice. You know, when you move it over, we got red, but it just kind of stood out a little bit. It's a little weird. It would have been nice to have that, you know, just full blacked out, then the whole blade matches. Not a big deal because I rarely put the safety on. So not the end of the world, just a little aesthetic thing I noticed. Uh, and then what's also cool is when you deploy the blade, if you activate the safety, the button will not depress and therefore you cannot close the blade accidentally. So a little cool feature there that's with most autos uh, function and operate that way. And so I appreciate the recessed safety as well as the just slightly protruding button. Whereas on like a lot of autos, here's a, a Gerber and power that we'll refer to a little later in competitive options. You can see how much further that button is protruding, the safety is protruding, makes it easier to engage with like say heavy duty gloves, you know, if you're in, um, you know, heavy duty environments, but for general utility EDC, these can kind of be obnoxious, kind of get in the way a little bit sometimes just you know, do doesn't add to the sleekness of the tool. This is nice, slim and sleek, but still very functional, particularly barehanded to operate the tool. Now, if you can notice there, that spring is perfect. This is like the exact speed, and we'll see later in other options, uh, that I prefer. So it fires out, it's not so you know, strong that like shocks the knife. And if you don't get your finger off fast enough, sometimes it will not fully engage the lock. So that doesn't happen with this blade. Very nice and functional. Good stop bar on the back there. Plunge lock, you know, just like you would expect on most autos. And then you, just like most autos, you're gonna have a very slight rock side to side just for the tolerances of the mechanism, but the up and down is nice and solid. So good lockup, no complaints, good firing mechanism. So the mini has that exact same push button, exact same feature. Now you might notice that it is shocking my hand a little bit more, it's snapping, just because I believe it's a shorter blade, same mechanism, but shorter blade. So it's whipping out and just giving us a little mm. Now I haven't accidentally not gotten my finger off the button in time to let it engage, but that's just something you know that I kind of noticed. Nice and snappy there. No safety on the Mini. Now I've never, I've owned several, several autos. I've never had one accidentally deploy in my pocket. So safety is nice and that's cool, but I wouldn't be concerned or nervous, particularly with this model on how they did the button being nice, just a hair above flush with the pivot buck design that you're gonna see on both models. They're very cool accent piece. So easy to engage, but not being overly obnoxious. Now I love that sniper gray color and you can get these blades interchangeable. You know, if you like the full size, but you like the copper, cool, go with it. Um, that we see on the mini, you know, and vice versa. These are uh, Cerakoted, I believe, over aluminum with handle scale. So there's a lot going on with these handles, but man, that with that red, it just pops so well. This blade is screaming for a Boba Fett Mandalorian armor edition. Someone's got to partner with Buck to do that with that red. I think it would be so cool to have like, you know, black, green, red, you know, worn vibe, just like some uh, Mandalorian armor that Boba Fett would wear. I think that would be so dope. So uh, the handle itself from uh, front to back is going to be 4.6. So nice and large. I can easily get my full size hands on that. Uh, the thickness is 0 0.59. So good thickness, I believe right there. The liners have been milled. So it's going to come in at about four and a quarter ounces, uh, which is pretty normal for about this size. Slight coffin design, you know, tapering slightly, but it doesn't feel stick like small, like I'm holding a pencil. Feels very good, natural grip. No jimping, all the edges have been milled, so it's nice and comfortable. There's no sharp points on it, but very geometric. Both models are gonna be very geometric. And this is a very unique, you know, like pyramid design here. And you can even kind of see, particularly on this model, even how the grind kind of uh, I don't know what the word is, Ch chamfer maybe, it comes in almost at like at a 45, and I've never really seen that before. So that's really cool. I like that a lot. Now, it may look like it is a mile away from the cutting edge, and it's far, but it's not as obnoxious as you might think. From my finger to the cutting edge is 1.1 inches. Most blades are about 1 point, or excuse me, 0 0.8. So it's only 0.3 further, but you know there is a distance. For EDC, not a problem at all. You know, obviously if I was like trying to carve out a bowl or a spoon or something, yes, I'd want a little bit closer, but you know, just for your general task, it's totally fine. And it gives you that good natural sweep to really lock you into place in a hammer grip, 
a reverse grip and I'm not concerned about sliding up and you know injuring myself. So it's giving me the, the grip that I need without sacrificing any of the ergonomics. So it's a very comfortable overall ergonomic feel to the handle and just how it fits in the hand. Now as to the mini, you're gonna be looking at same type of profile uh, but it's going to obviously be shorter at 3.6 inches overall, and you're going to get about 2.6 of actual like grip, which means that I can grab this easily with three fingers. It's got the same thickness at 0.59, so good, and it feels definitely bigger and more grip than a lot of other you know California Legal Mini um, autos that I've used in the past, and that guard there really does keep you really locked into place. So. Um, that has a lot of control for you and it's going to feel good in the hand still has the milled out liners all that stuff comes in at like three and a quarter i think ounces uh, overall so but i like that it definitely feels a little beefier clunkier is not the right word but you know like chunkier in the hand and for such a small tool i think that's good because then it gives you more leverage more to work with more grip and you don't feel like you're you know I don't know, trying to grab like a tiny little spoon or something to try and like do your work with. Now, one thing that I did notice, just more of an aesthetic thing, uh, but I, maybe there's a, a reason, but uh, what I saw back here on both models, the full size and the mini, is that you have these really cool like tubed, um, you know, torque screws. And then on the other side, they're gone, you know, they're like recessed in, they're flush, they really make the whole flow of the tool look really good. I like that, it's really cool, but they didn't do that on the stop bar torque screws. So there's the stop bar. It's just a normal torque screw. It's not like this kind of like, I don't know, barreled design over here. And you know, the screws are um, exposed on either side. I don't know if that's literally like a function that these bolts don't function up here properly, but if that had just flowed, that would have been Awesome. So just a little, another aesthetic aspect that I noticed uh, with both models that would have been cool to see flow through the whole design. I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts. Which color currently do you like more? Do you like the copper? Do you like the sniper gray? Which one connects with you just on a visual level? Now these pocket clips are ambidextrous loop over pocket clips, tip up only, which is all great. I have zero issues there. It's blacked out. They're not super huge, obnoxious, very low. Um, styling, you know, on the uh, Buck logo right there. Love all of that. Uh, you just have these two torque screws on the top. This is similar to some of Buck's other designs. You just unscrew them and flip them right or left. So that's pretty sweet. The one aspect that I did see with the full size is you can see that the they are not the same pocket clip. The Mini does have a smaller pocket clip and the flare is slightly less. It's, I would say the flare on the Mini is perfect. The flare on the full size is a little obnoxious. Um, you can, you know, grab all your, you know, pants and things like that. Doesn't really cause too much of a hotspot ergonomically, but it just protrudes more than I would like. I've definitely had a snag on one or two things. I mean, that's a car scraper for sure. I will end up unscrewing this and like slightly bending it down just a hair. So not the end of the world. It's just a little data point for you that that's a pretty big flare and the mini's flare is like perfect. This one's a little over the top for my taste. So what about price? What are these running for? Street value, you're gonna throw down your hard earned money. What do these run for? And what are some competitive options? Just give you some food for thought when you are making that decision. Now, these guys are gonna go for the full size, about 165 bucks on average, give or take. So 165, 64, you know, right around there. And then the mini is gonna be like 134, 135, something like that. Now for USA made, you know, quality, the forever warranty that Buck offers, all that, that's, you know, really kind of middle of the line of pricing that you'll see for US autos. There's some that are like 200 bucks. There are some that are significantly cheaper. And so you just have to make that choice. Two options for your consideration just on the full size is obviously going back to that Empower by Gerber, um, American made as well. S30 V steel, which we would argue is a better steel than 154 CM. It'll hold its edge a little bit longer, a little bit tougher to resharpen, not as easy to get a fine edge on as um, the 154. Very similar. I wouldn't say very similar. The S30V uh, is going to be a better edge retention type of blade, but you will notice that it's definitely the Empower is uh, a lot thicker, kind of not as refined. The buck definitely feels more refined. As we talked about earlier, the buttons and safety are much higher protruding. And this dagger blade, though good and pretty thin, 
um, just the way the gr its ground is not anywhere near as slicey as on the buck. And as I was talking earlier, this thing is really snappy. And there are times where I, if I don't get my, yep, there we go. See <laughs> the lock, uh, the lock is so fat or excuse me, the, uh, the action is so fast. If you don't get your finger off that button fast enough, um, it will not fully engage. So it's a little learning curve, not the end of the world, We're about 160 on average. So 160 for that model. And then just as another um, option here, we got the Kershaw Launch Series, USA made, um, aluminum handle scales as well. A lot of them are ambidextrous. Most will not come with safeties at all, but the buttons are kind of nice and re recessed like the bucks are. This one will have CPM 154. Um, now those are from the same company, the and honestly you and me the users are not going to really see a difference i've had several blades with both it's really difficult to find a difference you could argue cpm 154 is a little bit tougher um, and a little bit easier to get like a razor fine edge on so if you're like you know your hobby is resharpening then you'll notice a little bit you can get a finer edge quicker on cpm 154 but for you and me the average user they're basically the same um the launch series is cheaper you know it's going to be about like 110 to 130 depending on the model that you you know decide to go with so something just to kind of consider there so buck kind of comes right in the middle of what's available there are plenty of protex and things like that that are going to be well over you know 200 that have 154 cm on them emerson auto stuff like that so um, for what you're getting I think there are a lot of features it's definitely more compared to all the other autos I own one of the most EDCable that I enjoy carrying and EDCing for the features and aspects that we've talked about today particularly this um, full size here so Buck did send these two blades over to me to be able to test review for you guys give you my thoughts on them show you what their capabilities are so you can make a wise choice about the deploy series and whether or not they're worth throwing in your rotation and carrying on a regular basis uh, guys I want to hear from you what are your thoughts on the Buck deploy series the mini the full size if there's something that I missed. Uh, I'll do my best to answer them in the comment section below. I invite you to comment. Uh, it always helps with the algorithm, but also it's just fun to see your guys' thoughts and your take and you know have the discussion that we have here at Gideon's Tactical. I invite you to subscribe if you're not yet a subscriber and check out the other video. I'm throwing up content like this every single week. And until next time, always remember, stay equipped, stay prepared, and I'll see you out there.